Who is the most disturbing individual you have ever met? To this day, I have no idea if my dad did it. I wouldn't blame him if he did. A week or so before my 10th birthday, I walked to the corner store with a $5 bill and picked up a jar of ragu for my mom. On my way home, a man I've never seen before fell in step with me and began talking. Hi, he said cheerfully. My name is Dr. Ramsey. I'm a pediatrician. Do you know what a pediatrician is? I walked along silently, not replying and fervently hoping he would take that as a sign he should leave me alone. Subtleties were not his strong suit, though, because he kept right on chattering. Are your parents looking for a pediatrician? For you, of course. You're almost a big girl now. You'll be needing another kind of doctor soon, won't you? That's okay though. They can still bring you to me. Until then, what's your name? You have beautiful hair. I was just on my way to get some suckers for the candy jar in my office. Do you like suckers? Thankfully, we were nearing my house, so I ran forward up the back steps and into through the kitchen door. I didn't know it then, but that was the beginning of a very long, very scary ordeal. It didn't take long after that for Dr. Ramsey to begin showing up. At first it seemed benign enough, at least to a kid. He would drive by nearly every day, smiling and waving. I told my mom, who said maybe it was on his way home from work, but then the phone calls began. My dad called me into the living room and sat me down. He asked about the day Dr. Ramsey followed me home and if I talked to him. He said I wasn't in trouble, but that I needed to tell him the truth. I told him no, and he asked if I was sure I told him no again, and he frowned, then asked then how does he know your name? I didn't know. It turns out that was not all he knew. He knew my sister's name as well. Pretty soon neither my sister nor I were allowed to answer the phone. He called several times a day. At first neither of us knew what he was saying. Then one night one of my brothers told us that he was telling my parents that he was going to hurt me and later my sister. Things got complicated after that. My dad had called the police, but as this was before there were any stalking laws, there was not a lot they could do. They told my parents to call back if he tried anything. My dad then called a friend of his from back in the day who happened to be a cop. For the next month, my dad's friend escorted me to went from school. Suddenly, life as I knew it came screeching to a halt. I couldn't walk to school alone. I couldn't play outside. I couldn't walk to 700 to 1100. When access to me was completely denied, things escalated. It was around this time he began threatening my sister as well. Then one afternoon, my sister, two of my brothers, my mom and I were all in the kitchen. One of my brothers saw a glimpse of someone in the garage. They'd seen him too. Dr. Ramsey came bolting out of the garage, my brothers chasing after him. They ran all the way to Cherokee Park, where he lost them in the trees. My parents called the police again, but nothing came of it. The only information they had was a description and the fake name Dr. Ramsey. A couple of weeks later, we woke to find our dog hanging from the side porch. She was a gorgeous saddleback German Shepherd born the same day I was. We were all devastated. The cops said there was no evidence it was him and ruled it accidental, but none of us believed that his phone calls became more informative. In the meantime, he would talk about who was home and who wasn't. If my brother would say my dad was home, he would tell him who was really in the house. He also would talk about the house itself, about the window in the kitchen he could easily open with a wedge from the outside even when it was locked, and about the French doors that connected the living room to the side porch, and how the lock could be opened from the outside if you jiggled it just right. That night, my dad put in some carpenter nails at the bottom of the French doors until he could get a new lock. Ordered. My parents had to go to a company event for my dad's work. My older brothers were at Saints W Roller Skating Rink. My sister was on the phone with her best friend. My little brother was on the floor, asleep. I was watching Devo on the midnight special with Wolfman Jack. It was late. Suddenly the top of the French door swung inward, and in the few milliseconds before the nails in the bottom caused them to snap back, I could see his silhouette. My sister whipped the phone at the television and we ran up the stairs. About halfway up, we realized our little brother was still asleep on the living room floor. As quietly as we could, we slipped back down the stairs to get him. We all went into our bedroom and didn't turn on the light this way. We could see outside. We watched out the window for a while, and when we didn't find him, we crept down the hall to our brother's room to look. We looked down and could see someone standing at the back door. He knocked loudly. What do you want? My sister asked out the window. He stepped back and said, is this the Mercy residence? I have a pizza for delivery. Can you come to the door? She scoffed at him, declaring she was not stupid. She could see he didn't have a pizza and she was calling the cops. He left. A short while later, my brothers returned home. We told them what happened and they walked around the yard watching for him. They came back in and things settled down. By now we'd pretty much given up calling the cops because it never helped. So we just went back in, each of us carrying a knife from the kitchen just in case. Eventually, one of my brothers went into the kitchen to get a bowl of cereal as a snack. You know that sensation you get when you can just feel someone watching you? Yeah, he had that in spades. 
He kept looking around the kitchen, through the doorway into the dining room at the windows. He didn't see anything, but he could still feel eyes on him, so he went closer to the door to try to see better. The kitchen lights were reflecting on the windows of the door, so he still couldn't see. He stepped closer, then closer again, until he was right up to the door, then cupped his hands on either side of his head so he could see there. On the other side of the window pane, was Dr. Ramsey, smiling back at him. He turned to yell for my older brothers, and when he looked back again he was gone. They went out again to look for him but didn't see him. The next night we were at the table playing crazy eights and my brother was restless. My sister asked him what's wrong and he said he always felt like any minute now Dr. Ramsey could show up almost immediately after he finished his sentence we all heard boom, boom, boom on the window right behind him. In the chaos the two eldest ran out, but he was already gone. A couple of weeks later I was at school and we were outside on the playground during recess. I was swinging upside down when I saw that now familiar blue Ford Galaxy cruising by, moving slowly. There he was, smiling and waving. He called my name and I ran to the teacher and told her the school had been told all about him and she took me inside right away and called my mom. That same day my mom had gotten a call from the school office asking her to verify that my dad was picking me up as he called to say he was on his way. He wasn't. Not long after that I woke up one night thirsty. I went down to the kitchen for a drink. In there, sitting alone in the dark, was my dad on the table. He had his 9 millimeters. He was tired of the police waiting until Dr. Ramsey tried something. He was tired of his children being terrorized. He was tired of being afraid every time he left for work that something would happen to us while he was gone. I sat with him for a time, watching before he sent me back to bed as suddenly as it began, it was over. He had vanished from our lives. The phone calls, the drive-by with the creepy waves, everything. For a long time during and after the Dr. Ramsey days, I would have a recurring nightmare in which I would wake up to find him standing over me as I slept. It took a long time before I felt like a kid again. I found out years later that when he was calling, Dr. Ramsey would tell my parents that he was going to abuse and hurt me and my sister and that there was nothing they could do about it. I don't know what happened to him when he disappeared. I don't know if he was in a car wreck, locked in prison, or in a coma. Sometimes I wonder if the wait ended for my dad when he was sitting in the darkened kitchen one night. I don't know and I'm not sure I want to.